Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video of Unit 12. In this video, I'm going to introduce you the concept of mole. So here in this picture, you'll see a very shiny object. And this shiny object is none other than, of course, gold. And you see a bunch of gold bars here. Let's just imagine I grab one gold bar. Let's say I grab this bottom one here. And if you could, could you think about or imagine that you're splitting this gold bar into half till the very end. So you keep on splitting it, splitting, cutting it, chopping it off, whatever. And at the end, at the very end, you'll be able to reach atoms. You'll be able to reach and figure out how many atoms there are in a gold bar. So how many atoms are there in a gold bar, you may ask. So let's say, let's say there are in one gold bar, there are 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 atoms. And this value is, you can imagine, it's pretty, 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 pretty large. It's like 6.02, like 20 zeros at the back. And it's going to be really, really, really annoying if you keep always mentioning this. So that is where this mole comes into place. So one mole, actually, it has a value of 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. It has this very beautiful relationship. And in one mole of gold, let's say, there would be 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 gold atoms. So it's just like an easier way or a simpler way for us to represent this value. So let's, let, let's say it's this same gold bar. I want to ask you how much does this weigh? What's the weight of this gold bar? Let's say you say um, this is 1000 grams. Okay. But every time I don't want to keep writing 1000 grams. Is there a simpler way to say it? Yes. We know that one kg or one kilograms is the same as 1000 grams. So it's the same relationship for moles. It's if the whole concept of a mole is to quantify or sort of guess, not guess, but we already know actually, that how many atoms would there be in a particular substance. Okay, it may not be atoms, it could be molecules, and we'll learn that later on. So another example I would say is if you have one mole of iron, iron is another very typical example of a metal. So how many iron atoms would there be in one mole? Remember, the relationship is in one mole, there are 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 here, iron atoms. What if I have five moles of iron? So now this time, remember the relationship is one mole is 6.02. Now it's very simple. You'll now is five moles, right? So it'll be five times 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 iron atoms. So the number of moles will just basically be times, you can just times that value to it. So if there are 20 moles of iron, it will be 20 times 6.02 times 10 to the power 23 iron atoms. Now you can see it's really getting really, really annoying for me to keep saying 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. And as we know, later on, you will learn that you'll learn a couple more formulas for this. But here, I want to also introduce you, actually, this number is made famous by this very famous scientist, Avogadro's, sometimes we call it Avogadro's number, or Avogadro's constant, whatever you prefer. And you can see here, Drake is here. He doesn't like the avocado, but yeah, there's a, quite quite a lot of you might spell it as avocado, but make sure it's not that. And you can denote it with the capital letter L. That's a symbol to denote Avogadro's constant, which is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. Okay. And for this topic, um, if you are new to this topic, then there are two main formulas that you need to know. But if you are a form 5 or form 6 student, then obviously you know these two formulas that are coming up, you're pretty much still using it to this day. Um, the first one is the number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. Now you'll be using this formula quite a lot, even in form 4, form 5, form 6 as well. So number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass. Now the unit for moles is MOL. The unit for mass is usually in grams. 
and molar mass is grams per mole. Now later on, I'll introduce more about these terms later on. Okay, and the second formula, which you should be familiar with, is the number of moles of particles is equal to the number of particles over L. When I write L, you should know it means Avogadro's constant. Okay, and what is Avogadro's constant? It is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. So later on, you can just omit writing 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. You can just write it as L. Okay, what does it mean by particles? Now earlier, remember I said sometimes you would not be using atoms when I mention it here. Now later on, we'll see an example. But I, I would like you to write it down for now. Particles here. So here, when I mean particles, they could have, they could mean atoms. They could mean ions. It could mean electrons, or it could also mean molecules. Okay, as we keep going along this unit, um, I'll keep referring it back to this sort of these two equations or formulas. Okay, so now let's do one sort of quick question. That's the best way to practice it so that we can, it goes into our brain for the long term. So here, I have three different um, substances. I have carbon here. Now what I want you to do is to write down carbon. I would like you to write down its chemical formula. The chemical formula for carbon is C. Okay, so now it's asking you in one mole of carbon, what are the number of particles? So we have just learned in one mole of particles, remember the relationship between one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. So let's say write that down. It is 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. And what are we talking about right now? We're talking about carbon atoms. Now notice the word I used here were atoms. Now why did I use atoms? Because here it's only carbon individually. It's by itself, so it's an atom here. But look at the next one here. Now I have one mole of oxygen. Now what's the chemical formula of oxygen? Is it just O? No, it is O2. Now why is it O2? Because we know in air or in the atmosphere, oxygen exists as O2. It's a molecule because that's, it's most stable in its diatomic state here. There are two atoms. Do you notice it? There are two atoms. And that's the definition of a molecule, remember? A molecule is consisting of two or more atoms. So here, in one mole of oxygen, now notice what's the wording that I'll use, the wording. It's 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. Remember, in one mole, it's always going to be 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. But this time, it's O2 molecule. This time, the word is molecule. Molecule, molecule. But you may ask me, sir, what if I want to represent this in atoms? Yes, you can do that, actually. So I'm going to use the same color here. Now, how many atoms are there in an oxygen molecule? Here you can see it's O2, right? That means there are two oxygen atoms, okay? So what if I have something else? Let's say I have this, okay? What if it was O3, for example? How many oxygen atoms are there? There are obviously three oxygen atoms here. Okay, it's like that, so here, what I'm going to do is, it's going to be, because now you have two oxygen atoms, right? So it would be two times the original number you had here. Two times 6.02 times 10 to mark 23. And now notice what, how I'm writing it. Now I'm just writing it a single O and atoms here. So this is back to the atoms bit here. Okay. So here you can um, use your calculator. Two times... Avogadro's constant, this is 
0.04 times 10 to the power 23 oxygen atoms here. Okay, how about the last one? The last one here, we have oxygen, so, sorry, we have carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide, its chemical formula, as we know, is CO2. And obviously, this is also a molecule. Now, in one mole of carbon dioxide, we will have how much? Also, remember, 6.02 times, you can't really see the point, 6.02 times 10 to 23. Again, now it's going to be CO2 molecule. It's not going to be atom, because it does not exist as atoms in its normal state. It's CO2 molecule. So what if, what if I want to ask you, what if I want to represent it in terms of carbon atoms? How many carbon atoms are there in one mole of carbon dioxide? Now, very simple. Look at its chemical formula. How many carbon atoms do you see there? Obviously, there's only just one there, right? There's only one. So basically, it's one times that original number you had. One times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon. Now notice I'm going to write down atom. Carbon atoms. So the answer for this is obviously 6.02 times 10 to the 23 carbon atoms. Okay. What if I want to find how many oxygen atoms are there? What if I want to find the number of oxygen atoms? Now, how many oxygen atoms are there in CO2? In CO2, you, you'll see that there are two oxygen atoms. So you're going to go ahead and write down it's two times and write down the Avogadro's constant there. It's just that simple. So oxygen atoms. And then take out your calculator. And this will also be equal to 12.02 times 10 to the oxygen atoms. Okay. So here we had molecules on the top, CO2 molecule. And then we could, even though it's a molecule and even though it's a compound now, this is a compound. CO2, we know it's a compound. We can still find the individual atoms if you like. And it's just by counting how many atoms there are present there, like that. Okay, and what is the molar mass? What's the meaning of molar mass? It's basically the relative atomic mass. The, when the relative atomic mass of all of the atoms combined, of all atoms. And if you're a form former student, you'll be asking me, sir, what is the relative atomic mass? So on your periodic table, actually, it's very simple to find it. It's pretty much the mass number. Okay, it's the mass number, the number of protons plus the number of electrons. So here, look at carbon. If you go to carbon, you can find the mass number of carbon at the end of your periodic table. It'll be given to you. The atomic number is six. The uh, mass, the mass number would be. 12. So, and I said the formula for, sorry, the unit for molar mass is grams per mole. Okay, how about for oxygen now? Oxygen, if you look at the periodic table, the relative atomic mass or the mass number is 16. But don't forget, now you have O2 here. You have O2. There are two oxygen atoms here. So you need to times it by 2 which is equal to 32 grams per mole. And finally, you have carbon dioxide here. Carbon dioxide, carbon, it is 12, the relative atomic mass. And then when you have CO2 now, right? So you're going to add all of them up. Remember I said it's a combination. So it's going to be addition here. So I'll write it in orange here. You're going to combine them together. You're going to add them together. So the addition, so 12 plus and O2 here. Remember, O2 is the atomic relative atomic mass for oxygen is 16. But don't forget, there are two of them times by 2. And now you can take out your calculator. This is 12 plus 
32 and this should be equal to 44 okay so this is the relationship of mole with the Avogadro's number so there could be, you could represent it in atoms or molecules or even something else so primarily we'll be talking it in terms in our DSC primarily we refer to it as atoms or molecules or ions but the main point is to introduce you of this first formula here number of moles is equal to mass over molar mass which we'll be using this in the coming um, few like uh, in the coming few videos okay and one more reminder here remember the number of moles of anything you will gonna you're gonna times it with Avogadro's number so if you have 100 moles here you're gonna do 100 times Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 power 23 all right so that's it for this video i'll see you in the next one bye